it's always a it's always a pleasure to attend this conference. Um, um, to see colleagues and, and to see friends, patients, um, and I always learn something. The thing that I, the thing that I already learned this morning is that um, I'm wearing the same sports jacket as the picture in the introductory slideshow. <laughs> so it's time to go shopping. <laughs> um, two is um, when I got into the business of metabolic and mitochondrial disease, um, I, I was drawn to the neurologic symptoms that these patients were having, um, the muscle issues, the cognitive issues, the other neurologic issues. And um, I think I probably noted that these patients had constipation, but kind of didn't put it all together. What's come clear over time is that the GI uh, issues are uh, represent a very prominent part uh, of the presentation. And um, it's, and this is an information that you generally get from the medical literature. This is teaching directly from the patients. Patients, if you see enough patients, they start to teach you and you start to see patterns. Um, and so the literature is, is lagging behind. Um, what uh, was very encouraging to me is to hear a grand rounds at, at Tufts earlier this year by Dr. Blair Grubb, who's at the University of Toledo, who's an expert in autonomic disorders. And he sees uh, many of the patients who, mitochondrial patients who are evaluated at the Cleveland Clinic and notes, notes that um, the autonomic dysfunction is seen uh, 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 in perhaps between 50 and 75 percent of patients who have mitochondrial disease. And um, what I want to present this morning is that the GI motility issues and the autonomic dysfunction are really um, part and parcel of the same uh, problem. Okay, so just a little bit of background about mitochondrial disease. The, the body does not use um, glucose, protein, or sugar directly as a source of energy. It really has to break those down through a series of complex reactions. And so glucose comes in towards pyruvate and lactate. Um, protein comes in at several points, but through alanine uh, comes towards pyruvate at that point, And fat just distally. Um, and they all join together and uh, uh, provides substrate through aerobic metabolism to produce ATP. Um, the the uh, more complicated term for um, uh, energy production is oxidative phosphorylation, requiring oxygen for the production of uh, ATP. And if one subdivides that, um, that's the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And it's the distal part beyond pyruvate that is intramitochondrial. The more proximal part is found in the cytoplasm. But any part in the mitochondrion can be considered a mitochondrial disorder.